Hey everyone, Sawmill Charlie. It was 70 degrees Monday. Today, Saturday, March the 12th, it's 32 degrees and snowing. I'm out in the bee yard. Thought you'd like to see the yard with all the snow. So let's go in the house. I'd like to talk to you today about preventing your honey from crystallizing using a homemade hot box. Well, we made it into the house and we're down in the basement now. And here's my hot box. No more than a recycled refrigerator. Down in where the refrigerator part of this was, I took all the shelving out of it and left one small short piece of shelving to place my heat lamp on. Now here's the heat lamp that I use. I bought it at Home Depot. It has a clamping device that's spring loaded so you can attach it to something so it doesn't fall off the shelf. And I also bought a clear 125 watt heat lamp. Now they do make red lamps. They are designed for animal use and they also cost more. So don't spend your money on those. Try to get yourself a clear white heat lamp. Now I keep the temperature inside the hot box at 110 degrees. I connect this heat lamp to an Inkbird temperature controller and it cycles the light on and off at when it meets the 110 degrees the light is turned off and I have it set if it goes below 110 degrees by 3 degrees then the light turns back on to, to bring the temperature back up to 100 then it turns the light back off. So let's go to the side of the refrigerator here and I'll show you the Inkbird controller. This is the Inkbird temperature controller. The top digital display is the current temperature with inside your hot box. The bottom digital display will display whatever temperature you have set this controller to. Below that is a little red light on that tells you that it is trying to heat the hot box and the heat lamp would, is on at this time. As soon as it reaches its temperature, then that little red light will go out and you know the light has been turned off. Below that is the set button and then there's two up and down arrow key, uh, keys that you use to set the temperature control to the desired temperatures and parameters that you can use it for. Below that you have three cables. The one small cable is for the temperature probe that goes inside your hot box that tells the controller what the current temperature is. The cable to the right side is the power cable that goes to your outlet in your house. And then the center cable is a cable that has two outlets one it says cooling and of course the other one says heating and that was the heating plug is where you would use to plug your heat lamp into since we're going to try to heat the hot box. And that is how this unit works. The model number for this unit is ITC 308. It's considered to be a plug and play temperature controller. I bought this unit off of Amazon a couple years ago for approximately $50 and it's been working great ever since. We're here in front of the hot box now and on the hinge side of the door I've ran my temperature probe cable, the heat lamp power cord through that side of the door so when we close the door the seal around the door will seal the hot box off preventing any of the heat to come out. Inside the box, you'll find that I have two buckets of honey on the bottom with my bottling bucket sitting up on top of one of the honey buckets, which are all filled full of honey. On the shelf, you'll see the heat lamp and the temperature probe cable. Now make sure that you keep the temperature probe cable tip hanging in midair so you get the correct temperature inside the box. You don't want it touching any metal or buckets inside, which will give you an incorrect temperature reading. You're going to find when you heat your honey 
that it will flow so much better when you're trying to fill your bottles compared to room temperature hunting. And I try to keep at least one bucket of honey in reserve at all times in the hot box so it's ready to refill my bottling bucket. So now let's open up the door so you can see inside. And here it is. I've got the two buckets on the bottom. Here's my bottling bucket. On the shelf over there is the lamp and here is the cord for the temperature controller. Also in the door here you have these shelves. If you have one or two pound bottles of honey that are partially crystallized, you can put those bottles in this door and within maybe one or two days at the most they will be decrystallized. As you saw the light just come on that indicates that the temperature has fallen three degrees at the temperature from 110 and now it's trying to reheat the box. So let's close the door so we can get the temperature back up to 110 degrees. Now dealing with crystallized honey in five gallon buckets, if it's just starting to crystallize, you can put a bucket in here and I would say in about a week it'll be turned right back to complete hunt liquid honey. If your honey has crystallized to the point where it's kind of like thickness of applesauce, it'll probably take more than a week, possibly two weeks. And if it is crystallized beyond that, it will probably take at least two weeks and to get it relatively liquefied, but you might have to use a water bath in order to completely decrystallize it back into a liquid form. So I hope all this information has helped you so you maybe can build your own hot box and be able to heat your honey. So please like, subscribe, and have fun with your bees.